Today I'm making over some thrifted pieces that I have found for my home. I'm trying new techniques and I'm giving you some ideas for the spring. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa, where I share high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget, as well as extreme before and after room transformations. If that's something you enjoy, please make sure to subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. Today, I have a mixture of furniture and smaller home decor pieces, as well as another project that I created out of those two banisters that I shared in last month's thrifted DIYs. I'm sharing some practical updates and some useful ideas to spruce up things that you may already have in your home. So let's get started. So I mentioned that I went to South Carolina a couple months ago and I made some purchases at some thrift stores. I still have some of the items to make over and this is one of them. This little box cost me $8 and it's supposed to be a botanical wood recipe box that was originally priced at $43. Now it was in great condition and I thought this would be perfect for a little seed box. And so naturally I went for my DIY paint. And for this, I went with the color White Swan. Now, because of the stripes, I did have to give this a couple of coats to cover everything evenly. So I know a lot of you are waiting for my DIY paint and it is coming. The store is almost ready to go. I had to hire somebody to help me with this because it was a little bit overwhelming and this person actually specializes on online shops. So they're making it so much better to navigate where you can go in and choose from decals, a DIY paint, our merchandise, and even our new home decor category which many of you have suggested that I sell the pieces that I remake on my channel. So that's also going to be something new. Again, I'll be sharing the announcement very soon, but you can always go to the latinanextdoor.com and check out my website to get familiar with it right now. Okay, so back to the little seed box. Since I had such a beautiful blank slate, I thought it would be perfect to use these Iron Orchid Design transfers that IOD sent me this past month. I have previously used IOD molds. However, this is the first time that I've used a transfer, so I was really excited to use them on this project. Plus, I thought since I'm gonna be putting seeds in this little box, regardless of whether they are floral seeds or vegetable seeds, I just thought this would definitely make this piece look extra special. And so once the paint was dry, I began to cut these and then apply them onto the little box where I thought they would look perfect. Each of these little transfers comes with this little plastic spatula that you can use in order to apply your transfers onto your projects, which I thought was very nice. Now it took me a little bit to figure out how to best rub the actual transfer to get it to remove itself from its plastic the best way possible. So you'll see me changing my methods here or there. But basically you just rub it on and then peel the plastic off. After I had placed all of the transfers where I wanted them, I took some of the DIY wax in clear and I'm just using a lint-free t-shirt rag in order to apply this around everything. Now the wax is used to seal everything in. You let it sit overnight and then the following day you're going to buff the wax and it will give it the most beautiful finish. So next are the little knob. I had originally thought that I would replace it. However, 
because of the way the little box was constructed I wasn't able to use a different kind of knob but since I did put flowers on this I thought it would be just perfect to go ahead and just use the current knob but just update it with some antique gold rub and buff and I just think it looks absolutely darling after it was painted in this color and while I was at it I decided to go ahead and paint the little feet that were already on the box with the same color rub and buff once everything was dry, I put everything together and this is how it turned out. Now this was actually a more recent thrift purchase. I found these when I was looking for the tray that I had created for my Serena and Lily look for less dupes video. I wasn't really in the market for these, but I came across them and I just thought that they were a great shape and I love the little ribbed detail that they had along the body. At $1.99 a piece, these were a great bargain, but I will say they gave me a run for my money because I just couldn't get the right color combination at first. I started off with sandy blonde and white swan. I wanted a very nice pale nude color. However, that didn't work out. So I took some of DIY paint in the color old school and began to paint them. But then I came to the realization that I don't have any dark gray, charcoal, or even black decor in my home. So this really wasn't gonna go with anything that I had. So I had to do the next thing. So I painted the top white and I began to gradually turn it into that dark color, kind of giving it an ombre effect. However, when I was done with that, it still didn't feel like quite me or my decor. So I gave it another go and this time I chose a beautiful sage green color instead. And I basically did the same treatment that I did with the dark charcoal. I had the wet white paint at the top, the wet green paint at the bottom and then with another brush I would come in and kind of blend the two together. Sometimes I would mist it with my misting spray bottle of just regular water and I'd go over it again adding more white at the top, a darker color at the bottom and then just blending the two together. When they were both dry, I came in with the clear wax and began to apply it all around the candlesticks. Next, while the wax was still tacky, I came in with some of my white wax and began to rub it from the top towards the middle part of the candlestick, just to kind of give it a little bit more of a coastal feel and have that white just come down a little bit further into the green. I made sure to get the white into the nooks and crannies and then I would come back in and remove the excess on the outer ridges. If I needed a little bit more white wax to go inside of the ridges, I would just take a really small artist brush and apply it inside and then I'd rub the excess off. The last thing I did was trace out some felt circles cut them out and then hot glued them to the bottom of the candlesticks so that they wouldn't affect any of my surfaces. And this is how they turned out. For this next project, I'm going to be working on this little cabinet that I got off of Facebook Marketplace for only $20. This piece is from Hobby Lobby and it retails for over $100. I've loved it and I've seen it there several times. However, when I saw it on Facebook Marketplace for only $20, I had to pick it up. 
On that note though, it did have a little bit of staining and a little bit of water damage on the inside of the cabinet. So I thought it would be a really great idea to paint and customize the inside of the cabinet since the outside was perfect just the way it was and I honestly didn't want to change it. But the inside I thought would be so charming. And I wanted to share this with you all because maybe there is a piece of furniture that you might have in your home that you just love the way they are but you want to do something to it. You don't necessarily have to paint the outside. Why not paint the inside? I do plan on using this in a bathroom and I thought it would be so charming to have something on the inside that was just as beautiful since I'm going to be opening this little cabinet quite frequently. And in addition to the inside shelf portion, I also painted the inside of the drawers so that everything was nice and cohesive. Gave everything two coats and let them dry thoroughly and I went back to my IOD transfers. And again, just like the little box, this is a simple process. Remove the back paper from the transfers, apply them to your surface, rub them, and then peel back the clear plastic. And if you happen to see that a part of your transfer is coming up with the clear plastic, just put it back down, rub it a little bit more, and then peel it back, and your entire design will come off. After everything is adhered, I'll take some of the DIY paint clear wax, and with a lint-free cloth like a small t-shirt rag, I will just rub it in everywhere. Next, I remove all of the painter's tape and let the wax dry overnight. I came back the following day to buff everything out and here are the final results. So let's step back for a second. Remember these banisters that I had purchased and I shared two DIYs already in my thrifted decor and DIY video last month? I had created a set of bookends as well as a set of candle holders, but I still had more pieces left over. As you recall, my husband cut both of the tops of the banisters, but only one was used for those bookends. So I had a whole other one left over. My husband also cut four small pieces of toe molding. Now this came from excess molding that we had from the bathroom renovation we just shared last week. I asked my husband to cut these to fit right outside the perimeter of the base of this banister. I used some wood glue to attach them to the bottom and my husband came with his big boy tool and nailed them in to hold them in place. And isn't it just adorable? It looks like a cute little chess pawn. No, I don't play chess, but I did enjoy the Queen's Gambit on Netflix. After that, I took some wood filler and filled in any of the holes and the little spaces between the toe molding and the banister. Once it was dry, I took some fine sandpaper and sanded everything nice and smooth. Then I took it outside and I spray painted it a little bit with some spray primer. Now it looks a little splotchy at the top because it was really cold outside when I did it and you're not really supposed to use spray paint during certain temperatures, but I had no choice. <laughs> so I went ahead and did that and it was just enough 
to get all the dark parts covered before I painted it. I started painting the top part of it with the white swan. And then I got some sandy blonde and began to paint the bottom of it. Just like the candle holders that I showed earlier, I wanted to create an ombre effect going from light down to dark. Once the top and the bottom were painted, I came in with a mixture of both paints and I began to paint the center area with that lighter color. After that was dry, I came in with a lint-free cloth and began to apply DIY clear wax all over to seal the project. I traced a felt square from the bottom of the piece and then I cut it out and hot glued it to the bottom. And with that, this piece was complete. Well, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And I'd love to know in the comments below which one of these was your favorite. Be sure to tune in every Wednesday for a new video on my channel. This month, I actually have one additional video to my regular schedule, so stay tuned for that announcement. In the meantime, I have a couple more videos right here that you might enjoy. Until then, adios.